Hello, everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and I'm going to talk about the case of Azaria Chamberlain. Everybody knows this case is the, well, the dingo got my baby, you know, case um, like that guy. Uh, it became an extremely famous case and pretty much a joke around the world. So anytime you misplace something, you say the dingo took it, you know, um, if you misplace your child, you definitely say the dingo got my baby or the dingo ate my baby. And a lot of us who did not live in Australia didn't really know the story that much of, uh, uh, of Azaria Chamberlain and what happened to her parents and Lindy Chamberlain, her mother who was accused of murdering the child and that the dingo did not do it. Um, uh, well, they had gone camping and supposedly she claimed that the dingo got into the tent and took her baby away. Um, so this story has gone on for years and years and years. I think it's almost like 40 years, uh, four different appeals. Uh, and I'm going to explain the cases as uh, simply as I can, probably through Wikipedia, because that's always the easiest. But I'm going to, what I, the commentary I want to make is I want to compare it to a lot of other cases and talk about the uh, expert witnesses. I want to talk about the media involvement. Um, and, and I want to talk about whether the claim, original claim that, uh, uh, the mother of Azaria, uh, Lindy, actually killed her child and blamed it on the dingo. Uh, is Was there some reason for the police to believe this? And I want to talk a little bit about the police investigation, the way the police were thinking, and go through some of the evidence on that and show where some of the problems actually were. So I'm going to get into all of that. But first, I want to welcome everybody who's in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> and I want to thank you by the way, for being a little patient because I was on the way home from a weekend away with my daughter and my granddaughter. We had a grandmother, mother, daughter weekend. We do this every year and we had a fabulous weekend. We just, we did so many things. We went to Charlottesville, Virginia and we saw, Mont we went to Monticello. We saw the home of Thomas Jefferson. Uh, we went to uh, a, an escape room, which was an Edgar Allan Poe escape room. And my nine-year-old granddaughter actually was really good and I was like, whoa, that's a detective in the making. Uh, and her mother is one. So, hey, you know, so <laughs> uh, we almost got out. Of, this is the first time we ever did an escape room. So, and it was a hard one. So I'm going to just say we almost succeeded. We did a little teeny weeny bit of help at the end. But anyway, we had fun. Uh, I went to a splash pad with my granddaughter today. And we just, I, I was the only adult out there running around in the water. Uh, we went to Luray Caverns and saw those. Uh, we, just, we just had a super time. And then we were driving back and there was an eight car pileup. <laughs> so I, I, I messaged everybody and said, I'm going to be a little late. And I was. So I postponed by just uh, 30 minutes. So thank you for being here, everybody. And let me just welcome everybody. So, get, so if you're coming to the channel for the first time and you're like, why is she talking to all these people in the chat room? It's because these people are my patrons. I have a patron only chat room. I want to let you know that. Um, and if you'd like to be in the in the chat room, please do join Patreon. It's five bucks a month. You come to eight live shows, four of these uh, case shows and four hangouts. And if you don't want to do that, okay, <laughs> I'm going to hold it against you. Please do just subscribe to the channel, like, and check all my playlists and see what else I've done because all my videos are public because I want you to learn from them. I'm not hiding anything. I just like chat rooms that aren't full of people coming in from everywhere. And, you know, most of you people are really nice, but there's a lot of whack jobs who roll in. Anyway, you can support the channel in many ways. Check the links below. And if you want to join Patreon, the link is also in the description. So, but I do want to say hello to everybody who's been waiting. You are so good. Kai Christine coming out of Minnesota. CJ is here. Um, <laughs> when the last email said, yeah, I don't know where you are. It's 930 Eastern's time. It's, it's 630 Pacific time. I'm trying to do like all the different districts areas. So wait, oh, sorry about that. I got, forgot to turn off my phone. All right. <laughs> She's in traffic. Yes. Big smash up. Um, so anyway, yeah. So I sent out messages, which I always do. Uh, Michaela is here. And Michaela says, I'm, this, this, I've been sick of hearing about this story for so long, but I'm going to add something different to it, Michaela. Uh, Lila is here. 
Ooh. Hi, hi, Jamie. I cooked dinner and she came over. Well, aren't you nice, Lila? Um, <laughs> um, let's see who else is here. Uh, Beverly is here. Loretta is here. Um, I'm going to miss some of your names and I apologize. Beverly is here. Uh, and let's see who else is in here. Uh, Lila said, uh, I'm, I'm going to point out what you said, Lila, a little bit later. And thank you for sending that over. This is some really good information. Wait a minute. Sorry, I left things on the screen. All right. Um, I know, let's see. Well, it's here, and then I'll get to the story in just a second. Uh, Beverly Webb said, uh, I watched a cry in the dark yesterday. That's the, that is, no, let me put the proper background behind me because I still have <laughs> my pitch for earning enough money to keep the channel going. Okay. <laughs> All right. You watched a cry in the dark. It ripped my heart out and made me mad. I think I was mad at the same time. This is the one with Meryl Streep. Um, and it is a fiction line. Well, it's a it's a dra, 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 shoot. I can't say it. Dramatic. It's a dramatic version. <laughs> I can't say the long one <laughs> of this case. Uh, if you want to watch a documentary, it's the best one. Is called Trial in the Outback, and it is fabulous because you get to see all the players, the witnesses. Uh, you you hear from all the, the Chamberlain family. It's amazing. Um, really, really good. And I watched that so I could get the, to see the info without mm, kind of the, I, I know Cry in the Dark is really, really liked, but I wanted to hear from the people themselves. And so I thought um, Trial in the out Outback was excellent. I'm in the United States. I could not find it here. So I had to use a VPN. I positioned myself in New Zealand and I watched it free in New Zealand. I didn't actually get to Australia in my VPN. So maybe you can watch it free there. I, I wish the VPN people were so, like paying me or something so I could really push them. <laughs> but VPNs are useful when you need information and you can't get it where you're living at. Okay, so CJ is here. And uh, let's see who else is here. Uh, Lisa N is also here. And Kathy is here. Oh, that's your second second live. Welcome. All right, Juniper is here. Hi, Annie Haley. Um now, so many people here, I can't, I can't get through everything. Um, okay, I just want to mention Benny. Hi, Benny. Benny is one of our wonderful patrons, and he is luckily no, not in the UK at the moment. I'm sorry, in Denmark at the moment. Benny's from Denmark, and he would be sleeping right now if he weren't actually in the Philippines right now. 9.30 a.m. Awesome. And heavy rain monsoon. I like monsoon season. Okay. And you're here. Hi, Sky Ricky from Canada. Blue Bell is here. Oh, Lisa S is here. I'm not, um, we say howdy here is here. <laughs> um, and I'm going to miss somebody. Uh, Loretta, I don't know. Now I'm getting confused because everybody's chatting. So anyway, if I missed your name, sorry, Aunt Dini's here. Um, uh, Lex is here. And if you're coming in, hello. And I'm going to miss your name. But anyway, I just wanted to say hello to everybody because you were patient. All right, let's get to this. Now, um, this is a... A, a, a case I want to compare to other cases because sometimes people will say, why this case and why not that case? All right. But let me at least explain the basics of this case. All right. Azaria Chamberlain, this is a little baby here. She was nine weeks old. She was an Australian baby girl. And they're going to say here is in, in uh, uh, Death of Azaria Chamberlain on Wikipedia. And they're now going to say was a girl who was killed by a dingo on the 17th of August in 1980, during a family camping trip to Uluru in the Northern Territory. Now, just hold that concept for a minute, because they're saying she, there has been, there have been four appeals, and in the last appeal, uh, Alindy Chamberlain finally won out, and they said, hey, you, you're, you're to basically totally innocent, and your child was killed by a dingo. So Wikipedia is going to report it that way, but I just want you to hold off not because I'm not going to say whether I disagree or not. I just want you to go through the thinking process with me. So did the dingo do it or didn't the dingo do it? And what led one way and what led the other? So anyway, so her body was never found. And this is an interesting issue because I'm going to compare this to some other cases where a body has never been found. And what do you, she was convicted, okay, uh, at, at one point. The jury found her guilty, and yet there was no body. So, and this, usually it's hard to get convicted without a body, but she did. So, I'm going to talk about that. 
Uh, her parents, Lindy and Michael Chamberlain, reported that she had been taken from their tent by a dingo. However, Lindy was tried for murder and spent more than three years in prison. Michael was also put in jail for some time. I don't remember that, but okay. I thought I didn't know he was actually in jail for, at any time. He was kind of like a co-conspirator, but <laughs> didn't kill the child. He just helped his wife cover it up. All right. Um, Lindy was released only after Azaria's jacket was found near a dingo lair and new inquests were opened. In, uh, in 2012, 32 years after Azaria's death, the Chamberlain's version of events was officially supported by a coroner. Now, one of the interesting things about all of these cases that we deal with is that why do we have jury trials if you don't require a jury in the long run to make a determination? Why can a coroner simply say, hey, hey the dingo did it, and then suddenly everything else just dis disappears? I'm not saying the coroner is wrong. I'm just saying it's interesting. Now, there was a, there's a, there was a detective on the case, and he said this interesting thing. He said, well, there are four, there are four uh, essentially appeals uh, and inquests. And he goes, well, if you got four of them, eventually somebody will agree with you. <laughs> I really appreciated that comment. Now, he, he, this particular place investigator, thinks she's guilty or okay, maybe not her, but somebody else is guilty. He doesn't think that Dingo did it, or he's got some interesting ideas. But anyway, I appreciated what he said, because over time, if you have inquest after inquest after inquest, or appeal after appeal after appeal, and you either go through a new, if you get a new jury, roll the dice, maybe those 12 people will have come up with a different thing. So if the first 12 people were right, how could the, why are the next 12 people then right, <laughs> or then they're wrong, and then they're right, or they were wrong, and they're, you see what I'm saying? It's like, if you keep replaying things, why do you get a different result? Is it because it's always a crapshoot? And then if you just take the jury and chuck them out, which is, you know, I'm not fond of civilian jury systems, but then who gets to say it? I'm, I'm going to say that person didn't do it. Is it a coroner? Is it the governor? Is it is it is it a new uh, prosecution team who says, oh, yeah, that other prosecution team, they sucked. Our prosecution team, they didn't do it. But I'm really just doing this for my political future. Where do we have some consistency? And this is not just about Australia. This is about the U.S. where I live. So anyway, so let's go back to the story. All right. So and I have to give you the initial story so that I can go into the evidence and go into why I'm going to compare it to other cases. An initial inquest after, okay, so the baby, essentially, they go camping. And they're having a nice time. They put, they put the, the, their older boys down. They had two older boys. They're, they're in the tent. And then she puts the baby down to sleep. At least that's what she claims. And all of a sudden, she comes screaming out, the bedingles got my baby. And, uh... And the baby's gone and the baby's never found. And some of the clothing of the baby is found, but never the baby. So what happened to the baby? One of two things. Well, there's actually a third. The dingo got the baby and killed it and ate it. So you're never going to find the baby. Or Azaria killed the baby and her husband helped cover, cover it all up and blame the dingo. Or is some interesting, very weird... <laughs> theories where somebody somehow she didn't do it but a human helped cover up what happened like it wasn't a dingo but somebody else's dog attacked her kid and killed it so they took the baby away and tried to blame it on a dingo i mean the whole <laughs> don't ask can't even go there so anyway an initial inquest after this all happened an initial inquest was held in alice springs supported the parents claim and was highly critical of the police investigation. The findings of the inquest were broadcast live on television, a first in Australia. Subsequently, after a further investigation and a second inquest, then the first inquest, I like, okay, you didn't do it. The second inquest, you did it. All right. And then again, here we have why was one one way and the other was the other way. Okay. All right. So now she was tried for murder and she was convicted on 29th of October, 1982 and sentenced to life imprisonment imprisonment and supposedly at hard labor. 
Azaria's father, Michael, was convicted as an accessory after the fact. So Michael, her husband, basically, <laughs> okay, um, this is how the story goes, according to the prosecution, that somehow Lindy, she had, she, this was her third child. Uh, she had wanted four children, two boys, two girls, you know, that kind of thing. She had the two boys, everything was grand, and she had this little girl, and there's some claims that the baby was like not perfect or something. They threw that one at Lindbergh to Charles Lindbergh. I'm like, I'm not buying it. Okay, anyway, she seemed to be a happy mommy with a little baby, but some reason on that day, she went to this, this location, a camping place, um, and and uh, she seen a, a husband takes a picture of the baby, and yet somewhere between that picture and that when the baby is supposedly put in a tent, she decides she's pissed off at the baby. So she gets in the car. She takes out, I think it was nail scissors or something, really crappy instrument for killing, and stabs the baby in the throat, <laughs> cuts the baby's throat. Blood goes all over the car. And then she supposedly hides the baby in the husband's camera bag, which I find really amusing because the, the husband's like a, I mean, he's a shutterbug. He loves camera shots. He's like, he's got all this equipment. I'm, I'm going to say, if you're his wife and you take all his equipment out and crap, throw it out and throw a dead baby in his bag, <laughs> You're going to piss off your husband really badly. But no, he wasn't pissed off. So then what he did after he found his wife, killed his daughter and stuffed her in a camera bag, he decided he would protect his wife and lie to the police. And so he's an accessory. That is literally a prosecution theory, which has gone awful. Okay, And I'm going to explain why they would come to this ungodly, awful theory a little later. All right. So anyway... So she was sentenced to life imprisonment. He was an accessory after the fact, but he was like, he was given a suspended sentence because the reason he got the suspended sentence was because there were two other boys to care for. And apparently it's okay for mommy to go to prison and not care for the two boys, but daddy needs to care for the two boys. Sure. Okay. Now. All right. The media focus for the trial was unusually intense and aroused accusations of sensationalism while the trial itself was criticized for being unprofessional and biased. The Chamberlains made several unsuccessful appeals, including the final high court appeal. Now, <laughs> here we, if we walk into the, the media issue here, which we have to, the media in this case were probably, it's probably some of the worst media crap I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of media crap. And I'm bothered by media stuff, not because they're reporting on the case, but because they, they absolutely descend into sensationalism and they don't care what the truth is. Or they don't, it's not like you're saying there's a theory here, the detectives are saying this and blah, da, da, da. They're reporting the facts. No, 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 they don't care about the facts. They're reporting whatever they can put out there that gets excited, the, the viewers excited to watch their, their television show or to read, read the newspaper. And it, now it's true on the internet as well. And, and we call that clickbait. Uh, but uh, some of the stuff was absolutely atrocious, like this. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, here. Here's a nice one. Uh, this is, a, I guess, the nail scissors cutting off Azaria's head. Isn't that lovely? Here's another one. Darwin's there. Uh, here's the dingo. I'm not sure exactly what that even freaking means, but all right. Uh, the dingo was framed. And here we have, I offer the dingo 10000 if he'll talk. The media went berserk um, and they didn't care about facts. They were interested in gossip. And this is, again, something I have a problem with the Internet. When I call people grifters on the Internet, it's because they do 50 videos and it's all gossip. So one of the issues came down to as to why we're not going to like uh, Lindy Chamberlain and her husband and why, why she would kill a baby is because she's a Seventh-day Adventist. Oh, really? So she's... She's of a religion that was not as well known in Australia at the time. And in the United States, um, Seventh-day Adventists are considered basically of the Christian sect, but a little bit different than some other uh, groups, shall we say. Uh, they're vegetarians. Uh, there's, there's usually a thing where I think um, uh, it's kind of funny because I didn't see this with Azar, uh, the Lindy. 
but often, you know, not too much ostentatious, like jewelry and makeup is supposed to be very plain. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a lot of, I have Indian friends who are Seventh-day Adventists and they don't wear gold jewelry and they don't, you know, and I'm like, oh man, I love, I love the bangles and stuff. I like wearing Indian clothes. And if I, I, I actually spent time with uh, Seventh-day Adventists and from India. And I'm like, man, am I supposed to wear this? <laughs> you know. Uh, so, but they, there are people had attitudes about her. And so it's like, they said that her, uh, some, some of the media came out and said that the name of Zaria meant sacrifice in the desert. And she was killing her child for whatever reasons, some, you know, for a biblical sacrifice, you know, <clears throat> um, I won't get into the whole, you know, Old Testament there. Uh, but just nonsensical stuff where a person who has a religion that you don't necessarily cotton to, and that's, that's a U.S. term, I believe, um, it's just not your thing, that you think everything they think is so weird. They, they would do really freaky weird things, like kill off their children just for the sake of it, you know, because... I, I, and so they went nuts on that. Uh, her demeanor wasn't appropriate. Now, I'm going to point out, that demeanor does have an effect when, when we're looking at behavior in cases and we say, is the behavior abnormal? Well, let me point something out here. All right. For example, if I compare this particular case to all right, Azaria, Madame McCann, and Jean Benet. Now, one of the reasons. The McCann case has had so many people think the parents are complicit in what happened to Madeline McCann is because their behavior is off. Likewise, with the John Bonet case, the behavior is off. So if you're a detective or a profiler, and I, I, for personally, I think the media can just tone themselves down. I also think everybody else on the internet can tone themselves down. But if you're a detective or a profile looking at these cases, do you have to look at the behavior of the parents and see whether it seems abnormal in a case of Madeleine McCann going missing, Jean Benet being found dead in her own house, Azara supposedly being taken off by a dingo? Um, parents are making claims. She says a dingo did. Dingo got my baby. They said somebody else got. Somebody came in and took Madeline. And they said somebody came in and killed Jean Bonnet. You have to look at the behavior of the, the people around the victim. All right. You cannot ignore that. And I know people they always oh, being unfair. No, even in the case here of Azaria Chamberlain, the, the, the detectives did have to look at the parents. They had to. And if they saw the parents were odd in their behaviors, it is going to throw up a red flag. Now, mind you, a red flag does not mean guilt. A red flag means you want to take a further look. Now, in this particular case, the question was with Azaria, is the, the parents were Seventh-day Adventists. And one of, the father was a, a, a pastor and the mother was a wife of a pastor. And they were very religious. And it was pretty clear very quickly, if the dingo did it, <laughs> that the baby was dead. The baby was not going to be alive. Within seconds, they had to accept that the baby was dead. Even, even if the, the dingo didn't immediately eat up their baby, uh, there would have been, the, the baby would have been out in the middle of the desert at the night and the hypothermia would have set in. The baby would have died. Okay. The ba they knew within a very short period of time, their daughter was dead. There was no way around that. Now, the daughter could have been dead because Lindy, the mother, killed her and daddy covered it up. Or the baby could be dead because a dingo took her. They knew the baby was dead. But let's assume they're innocent of anything, any wrongdoing. And the dingo really did grab the baby. They knew the baby was dead. They, in, the, in the early hours, after Lindy said, the, ba the dingo took my baby, they asked for, they asked for torches, flashlights, uh, and they went out to look. Everybody was trying to find the baby. Baby was nowhere to be seen. The clothing was nowhere to be seen. So time went by. And by the time morning came, you know, the baby's dead. So now you have this couple who are highly religious. 
And two things happen. One is in order to, well, two things. One is that in order to deal with the horror that has happened, it helps to have a belief that your child is somewhere besides just in a dingo and a dingo's tummy. You know what I mean? So you kind of like to believe your, your child is with God. And if that's what you believe, then you tell yourself, it's a horrifying thing. My, my daughter was a tragic thing happened, but my daughter is with God. And I'm going to have to accept that because I'm supposed to believe this. And I will believe this. I will believe this because if I don't believe this, I'm going to lose my mind. That's the first thing. Second thing, and this is what I think sent a lot of people off thinking weird things about them. Uh, he was a pastor and she was a pastor's wife. And they're both talkative people, probably because he's a pastor and she's a pastor's wife. They're used to preaching, essentially. And so this is like hardwired into you to preach. So when she went missing, immediately they were they went into the, 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 the they had the ability to talk about the happening of, of their daughter you know, take, being taken away as something, maybe God's will, they don't understand the plan, or they have to accept, but God is with, the babies with God. So they start talking about this stuff. And for people who are not religious, who are not Seventh-day Adventists, or just didn't understand where they might be coming from, thought they were cold, they thought they were just talking crap to cover up what had really happened, and the press, oh, you know, the press, of course, went, went bananas on and started saying all kinds of crazy stuff. So the press, which I I was part of for 15 years, I tried my best to, you know, when I do, do my shows to be very specific on evidence and, and, and not go in the gossip routine. But I have become very depressed about the press and they were obviously horrifying even <laughs> way back when and in every country. So the problem we have with the press is that the, the point of journalism is supposed to be to stay with the facts and they did not. They were more interested in writing exciting stories. So they did that and they inflamed the public. They infl and there was no way to get a proper jury. And you know, the whole thing where jurors, jurors like, oh, I don't know anything about this case. <laughs> well, A, you're lying like a dog, or B, you live under a rock and there's something wrong with you. So either way, you shouldn't be on a jury. So it, how do you get a jury who hasn't been listening to this nonsense for forever? Now, is it possible that the Chamberlains were uh, of a particular relig religious sect that had them behave a certain way, but they're still guilty as hell? Yes. So this is where the detectives have to say to themselves, okay, I don't care what the media is saying. I don't care what the, the, if they have weird behaviors and all that stuff. What am I looking at for evidence? Okay. So they're going to have to still do that. But there is a difference between what happened here and what happened here and what happened here. And this is what I want to bring out. What happened here was some people, some people thought they behaved oddly, but there was, the claim was, a dingo took my baby and there were enough people around witnesses who believed they saw dingoes at the site, mind you. And somebody heard a growl. Somebody heard the baby cry. There were a lot of witnesses who have, st who have stood by the Chamberlains and said, we think that there was a dingo there who did exactly that. There were some people feeding him. I'm not even sure if the father actually threw some food out, you know, where you shouldn't be feeding wild animals, but you do like bears. And then they come and rip your tent apart and take your kid. Right. So same thing here. So there was a good possibility that the child was truly taken by the dingo. All right. Weird behavior, whatever you think the parents are about. This is so. Get to the model of McCann case. The parents had strange behaviors, but we have this problem. There is no evidence of an abductor. Now, could there be one? In theory, yes, but there's no evidence. Over here, there was actually evidence they did find different things along the way that and a, a dingo was seen there not only the mother saying a dingo came out of the tent but that other people had seen the ding, a dingoes in the area here nobody had seen anything jean Bernier ramsey parents acted very strangely was there any evidence of an intruder in my opinion no um and there was a, a very bizarre 
fake ransom note, which didn't look like an, 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 a, a, a kidnapper would write it. So there were more reasons to believe that something was fishy with these two cases than this case. Okay. However, <laughs> not necessarily absolutely so. All right. So now I want to go to um, what, what, how she got, how she got convicted. All right. So how, so how did, um, whoops, sorry, wrong, wrong one. I want to go back here. All right. So how did she get convicted? All right. Let me t just give you the base, basic case against uh, Lindy Chamberlain. The Crown alleged Lindy Chamberlain had cut Azaria's throat in the front seat of the family car, hiding the baby's body in a large camera case. I still say her husband will be so pissed. You cannot put a baby in my camera case. Um, I don't understand where all the, you have to understand people have cameras. A large camera case has your camera and it has all the different filters and all the kind of fancy crap you have in there because expensive stuff. What, what did she do with all that stuff? And didn't she stuffed a baby in there. Wouldn't she, wouldn't it be easy just to wrap the baby in a blanket or something? Anyway. Um, then she then, according to the proposed reconstruction of the scene, oh, let me stop. When they reconstructed the scene, and, and I believe highly in reconstruction, but they weren't reconstructing anything. What they were doing was creating some kind of a theory, which was not very much based on evidence at all. There was never any proof any baby was in the camera case. So how did the baby get in the camera case in their theory? Um, they were trying to make something, a theory up that they could sell. That's different from reconstruction. Uh, so, so supposedly she then, after she killed the kid, killed the baby in the family car, then she according, okay, this is so stupid. It's hard to believe. She rejoined the group of campers around the campfire and fed one of her sons a can of baked beans before going to the tent and raising the cry that a dingo had taken the baby. It was alleged that at that, a later time, while other people were from the campsite were searching, she disposed of the body. Now, <laughs> my goodness, the how did she dispose of that body? I would like to know this. So, so somehow she put the baby in a camera case in the car. And I never heard that there was blood in the camera case. So somebody tell me if I'm wrong about this. Because I never heard about any blood in the camera case. So why? how did it end up in the camera case and why was there no blood in it? Why is there no blood on her clothing? The blood is, this blood is supposedly just in the car, you see, like blood spatter, which I'll get to in a minute, how that is completely bogus. But even if she did, for some reason, decide to kill a child with a nail scissors, which, by the way, why would you do that? Because all you have to do is stuff the little baby's face into the, the seat of the car and the baby will die. You know, that's what other women who kill their babies do. They suffocate them. Why in the heck would you like, well, let me just stab the kids so I can blood everywhere. What? What? <laughs> the stupidest story I've ever heard. So anyway, <laughs> so now she's got blood in the car, but she doesn't have any blood on her. She doesn't have any blood in the camera case that I know of. And, and then after she, she leaves, I guess leaves the baby in a car in a camera case. I have, I don't even have the, I don't even understand how this flew in court. The craziest thing I've ever heard. So then she goes back and feeds some beans to her kid. And there's even some story about how she had like, like wrapped up a blanket to make it look like a fake baby and to put in the tent. Sure. Okay. And so then she feeds these beans. Okay. Let me see where I'm at here with this uh, stupid story. Um, then she fed, oh, she, she fed, fed, fed her sons a can of baked beans. Only one of them. I don't know why the other one didn't get to eat. But okay, before going to the tent and racing the car, Dingo had taken the baby. It was alleged that the, at a later time, while other people from the campsite were searching, she disposed of the body. All right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That's where I wanted to get to. Where was she disposing of the body at? I mean, she didn't get in the car and drive away. She's disposing of the body. I mean, is her husband helping? It's like, honey, can you watch the kids? I got to get rid of the baby. Or was he said, honey, you watch the kids. I'll get rid of the baby. And then you walk, go into the desert, a place you really in the middle of the dark. Do you have a shovel? Like, are you able to dig a, like in the hard dirt of the desert, hide the baby someplace? The baby's never been found. So my goodness, in a, in a heartbeat, like, I, you know, I guess she had available 11 minutes or something. She goes <laughs> and somehow disposes of the baby. 
but she doesn't just dispose of the baby. She somehow takes the clothes off the baby and strews them around the desert so they'll be found later. So it looks like a dingo. I mean, who, who, who does all this? It's a lot of work. I mean, this is not how killers think. This is not people who lose their minds think. <laughs> so stupid. But anyway, all right. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to laugh. Oh, my God. But not her. She got to go. She went to prison. Anyway, the key evidence supporting this allegation okay, was a jumpsuit discovered about a week after the baby's disappearance, about four kilometers from the tent. Okay. I thought it was a quarter of a mile, but hey, I, I okay. So anyway, they found the, the baby's clothing here. They suppose they found the jumpsuit and a, I don't know. Uh, they also found the socks. The socks were there, the, originally supposedly in the feet, but then the, the the officer who found the the the, the, um, uh, the jumpsuit, is that what's called jumpsuit? Uh, I don't know. This is Australian term. I think we call it a onesies here in the U.S. I haven't had a baby for many many years. Forgot. Anyway, so supposedly he like picked all stuff up and played around with it, and then took everything apart and like, laid it out on the ground, which he shouldn't have done, but he did. Anyway, they found this, and this says here four kilometers from the tent. That's a pretty long way from the tent. What she do? Walk like a, she just disappeared for like how many hours? An hour and a half or something to go dump the thing. At the, okay, sure. All right. So then, now the if you see here, see the the blood stain around the neck. <laughs> this is where there there is a the, the prosecution came up with a an expert apparently they couldn't find one on australia so they had to go all over to england to find somebody who would agree with them anyway he claimed that this was not a matter of the of the dog biting you know the grabbing the neck of the child but instead this is where she she cut the, the baby with the scissors and this is this is what happened you see and um so there was this uh this is what one of them said um one of the experts and i'll get to his name in a minute and the other expert said, uh, she said, that there was um, fetal hemoglobin and stains on the front seat of the Chamberlain's 1979 Holden Toronto hatchback. And fetal hemoglobin is present in infants six months and younger. Azaria was nine weeks old at the time. Okay, so now, so you had two experts. One who said this couldn't have been, this wasn't a dingo bite. This was somebody cutting her. With, with some scissors. And the other uh, the other one um, said that there was blood in the car and there was proof of this. Both of these things, in my opinion, and our later opinions are not correct. And one of the problems was that uh, Lindy said that the baby was also not only wearing this, but over this was wearing this, uh, what's called a, um, a matinee jacket. But they never found them. They did not find the matinee jacket with the other things. So this helped the jury think that she was lying. That she was saying, oh, the reason I didn't find saliva from the dogs and stuff like that is because she had this matinee jacket on. Now, I'm going to get to the matinee jacket is a wee bit concerning. And this is where I think some of the police became suspicious of her because, of, first of all, the matinee jacket wasn't found with the rest of the clothing. Why not? And some people said, well, it could have been, you know, as the dog was running away, it could have been caught on a, uh, some kind of bush or something and it could have just pulled off. Well, yeah, but where is it? Shouldn't it be? In the direction, you know, before this thing was found, wouldn't the dog be running this way, have the matinee jacket would have been pulled off and it would be there, and then you'd find this? But they didn't. They went out and they found this, but they did not find this. Okay. So then they thought she was just lying. The baby didn't have that, but she was using that as an excuse to say why certain things weren't here, which, again, is a little bit exaggerated it really this is not the way people think i mean she's not going to make up an entire story about a matinee jacket to say oh that's why there's no saliva i mean i personally i just think that's dumb so anyway she was questioned about the garment she said she was wearing the jacket but the jacket wasn't present uh so then the singlet was inside suppose it was inside out and, she, and she, why was it inside out if a doggy had taken the body the baby's body out of there why would the singlet be inside out and she said, I never put one on backwards. So they said, oh, see, a dog couldn't have done this. So anyway, now that was it. That, so the, the prosecution case was basically that there's no way a dingo took the baby, whipped the baby out of this thing, 
First of all, they're saying dingoes don't do this. They don't, they don't carry off babies. Babies too heavy. You know, it's hard to get their little mouths around the skull. Don't believe it. Um, so I, we don't believe a dingo did it. Uh, we think that she, the neck was cut not by a dingo, but by a knife. And therefore, and she was lying about everything else. And therefore, the dingo is innocent. And you did it, Lindy. Now, the defense said... Uh, eyewitness evidence was presented of dingoes having been seen in the area on the evening of 17 August 1980. All witnesses claim to believe the Chamberlain story. And this is true to this day. If you look at the documentary, they, they're they still behind the Chamberlains 100%. They all appear in the documentary. They all say they never changed the story. They say that they were their stories were, they were pressured to change their stories so that they would not conflict with the, the uh, prosecution. They were not happy about that, but all of them stood behind the chamber and said, yes, there were dingoes there that day. We saw them. They We were scared of them. And so the dingoes, that, according to the defense, were there. Um, one witness, a nurse, reported hearing a baby's cry about the time when the prosecution alleged Azari had been murdered. So she's hearing the baby cry from the tent. Evidence is also presented that adult blood had passed the test used for fetal hemoglobin and that other organic compounds can produce similar results on that particular test. They're claiming that, but at this point in time, it wasn't as well known. All right. So now there was another fellow, an engineer, Les Harris. He said, Hey, I've been doing dingo research and I think his teeth could have done this and not a knife. All right. So however, Oh, and then also this, he cited an example of a captive female dingo who removed a bundle of meat from its wrapping paper and left the, the paper intact. One of the claims against, uh, Lindy was that she claimed that when they were interviewing her, uh, she had this kind of cold look on her face. And they said, well, what do you think? How did the dingo get your baby out of the of the, of its clothing without ripping all the clothing out of shreds? And she said, well, I've, I've, I know supposedly that that uh, a dingo could like peel a baby like an orange, you know, um, I think it was an orange, she said. And there were people like a Paul that you could even talk about your baby in that sense. That the dingo could just peel the baby out of there like it would peel an orange. Now, one of the interesting things about the media, supposedly, that wasn't the first thing she said. She was being interviewed by the media and they were doing take after take after take after take. And I've worked with the media and I've known that I've said certain things and the media will say, oh, but, but, but Pat, what about this? They keep trying to get me to change what I'm saying. They will even introduce information. So Pat, can you say that a serial killer, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, I can't do that. They go, okay, how about if you say a serial killer, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I can't do that. I have had them. That's why I won't do pre-recorded interviews because they will edit the crap out of me and they will try to force me into saying things that I won't say. And, and sometimes they'll just have me, I'll answer a question and then they'll actually put in a different question. When the documentary comes out, a different question is there before I give the answer. <laughs> so depending on what the documentary is about, if it's about something that they, they really treasure me as a professional, I might not have that happen. But if they bring me in as kind of a, a punching bag for some, th you know, that I have a theory and they want to punch that theory out. They will do me in. So I, I won't do those anymore. So here we have Lindy. They're doing take after take after take. God knows. They said this like take number seven when she said that. So like, ah, and that's the one they're going to use to make her look, look really bad. So you got to be really careful of that stuff because just because somebody says that doesn't mean it's true. And the media was also, since they were trying to push her as being guilty, made sure that she never was seen with a smile on her face before the baby was born, <laughs> always looking mean and nasty and, and hateful and all this kind of stuff and cold. They wanted that perception. They wanted to, you know, that's, that's it. They wanted to manipulate the perception of the viewers, not just give facts. So, so this is a story. And so what happened was the defense's case was rejected by the jury and she was convicted of murder. Uh, 1982, and she was sentenced to life imprisonment. And Michael, as uh, said, Michael Chamberlain, her husband, was also found guilty, but he got to go home to the kids. She was, she got, she was also pregnant at the time, and she was able to have the baby. I think she got out on appeal for a short period of time, where she was able to go home and take care of the baby. But then she had to, that baby, she could, she had to go back to prison. Baby was given to other people. It's a whole crazy thing. Watch, watch, uh, um, watch the trial in in the Outback. It's very interesting. Now, then, this interesting thing happened. The, in 1982, 
a chance, uh, no, sorry, 1986 is there was a chance discovery about this uh, matinee jacket. Uh, a British tourist, David Brett, fell to his death from Ayers Rock, Rock I'm sorry, Ayers Rock, and that's, that's that. Uh, if you look at the background um, where they were camping, this is Ayers Rock. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It could be Ayers Rock. I don't speak Australian. Okay. Uh, and he fell off the rock, <laughs> essentially. And he lost his footing, and um, they took eight days to find him, his body, and he was lying below the bluff where he had lost his footing in an area full of dingo lairs. Dingo lairs. As police searched the area looking for the missing bones that might have been carried off by dingoes, they discovered Azaria's missing uh, matinee jacket. And when that happened, they opened the case uh, the, the appeals, it was unanimously overturned all the convictions against Lindy and Michael Chamberlain. So now she was free. She was free to go home. Uh, and um, two years after they were exonerated, the Chamberlains were awarded $1.3 million for wrongful imprisonment. All right. A sum that covered less than one third of their legal expenses. Uh, things didn't, you know, it was a mess. Um, the findings of the third coroner's inquest released on 19, in 1995, said that they found the cause and manner of death was unknown. Is this unreasonable? Okay. Is this unreasonable? Well, no, because let me, let me tell you about some of the information that they found out. They found out that, remember that stuff about the car? That's all bogus. It, the, 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 there was no, that was actually not, there was no proof that there was any kind of baby blood in there. So that goes out the window. All right. She didn't lie about this matinee jacket, all right? She didn't. So that went out the window. So now what we had was, could a dingo have gone in and done it, all right? And there is actually this interesting recent case. I'm sorry, wrong one. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. So on the fourth inquest, she actually, in 2012, she's been free for a long time. And what happened was, on the fourth inquest, they finally basically, entirely exonerated her. They said, okay, they even went on the birth certificate and said, you didn't, the baby died from a dingo. All right. And one of the reasons was, here's a family. They went, they went, uh, they went uh, camping, not in that area, but in a different area of Australia. And they were staying in this, uh, they had this little camper thingy and a dingo actually stepped up, like went up into the tent thing and pulled this little boy out. And it was dragging him away. He has all these his marks, these you know, whole bite marks on the back of his neck. Um, he survived only because his father was able to save him from the, the dingo. And he was a much older child. And there were others, the other uh, cases that finally came out that said, look, dingoes do do this kind of thing. That they will drag a kid away. And, they can, and then that could have very well been that Azaria was take, actually taken by the dingo. So at this point in time, she, the, um, uh, Lindy is considered innocent. So is her husband considered innocent. She's gone on with her life, very rough, rough, rough years. She and her husband divorced. Um, there's a lot of contention over why they divorced. He's angry with her. He won't speak to her. She doesn't speak to him. She blames, supposedly blames her for something, you know, back in the day. Maybe it's because she encouraged the 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 um the animal to come close to the you know, close to the tent. I can't remember if he fed it some food or not, or somebody else did, but I thought he fed might have fed it something. But anyway, he also was there, wanted to take pictures and all this stuff. So did she blame him? Or was it just a case of during the time they were they were in prison, or she was in prison, they wrote a lot, a lot of love letters back and forth. But I don't know who, you know, when you have disasters like this, it, sometimes people just, they, they, they can't ever get, they just destroys their life. She, he remarried, she remarried. Um, kids seem, the three kids grew up, grew up seeming okay. They seem to be doing well. Um, some people would say that the reason that they fell apart was that maybe he actually thought she was guilty, <laughs> you know, and sometimes that does happen. But now let, let me go to one reason why there is sometimes a question. And, and that's why I think sometimes you don't want to jump down people's throats for having some idea that maybe things aren't 
maybe she's not innocent. Okay. Now, personally, I've looked at, I, I can't, the scenario of how she killed off the baby doesn't work for me. I think the whole scenario is ridiculous. So do I tend to believe that the dingo is guilty? Yes. However, I understand that I still have a couple questions. All right. And here's the problem people run into. And this is a problem detectives run into because when you're do, working on a case, you have to try to find out the truth. And sometimes it gets very confusing. And when I heard this story, here's what drove me crazy. I'm going to go to your comments in a minute. I mean, then I'm going to talk about some other things about, uh, about exonerations and stuff. Um, my problem was always this. I, and I, it took me a while to figure to find this stuff out. I, would, I, watched the, I watched a documentary. And I'm going, where did they find this? And where did they find this? Because depending on where the family camped, and when and where they found these two things is very important to me because the issue always came up is why did they find this, but not this. And one would think since this was over this, you would find this first and then you'd find this. All right. So let's go take a look at things. All right. This is the camp. This is, they were at, this is the Chamberlain's tent. And this is where they had some dingo uh, drag marks. So supposedly the, 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 the dog took, the baby out and there were some points where it looked like trackers said there were drag marks here so the idea is that the baby was being dragged along here okay uh then okay so let me go to this picture this is the camp i'm sorry this is whole camp uh this is the aboriginal camp sorry this is their tent now look over here this is where the jumpsuit was found near here now this is the big rock all right this is supposed, and, and, and I thought it was a quarter of a mile away, and they're saying it's further, but okay, whatever. But anyway, it's supposed to be here, all right? Um, this is where the jumpsuit's found, right here at the edge of this rock. Now, the jacket was eventually found behind the rock, and there was also a road that goes around the rock. If I am a detective looking at this case... I'm having a problem. One is that the jumpsuit was found here, but the jacket was found up here behind the rock. If the doggy's running from here, taking away the baby, and basically pulls the baby out of the jumpsuit about here, leaving the jumpsuit there, why is the jacket behind the rock? Why isn't the jacket about here? In other words, the jacket is ripped caught on a tr little bush or something and pulls off the body, the baby it's dropped, it's dropped here. And then over here, the, the, the baby's pulled out of the jumpsuit, the jumpsuit is left here and the doggy goes back here and eats the baby or whatever, or eats the baby here and then whatever. But why isn't the jumpsuit, why isn't the jacket found here? Why is it way over here? And why, if, and then there is a road here. Remember there is some concern that somebody might have, taken the baby and buried it someplace and taken the clothing and dumped it. Did they dump one here and then dump one here? I don't know. I have, I would like to go there to this outback location to the rock and drive around and see what I have to see. But this is an interesting problem. Now, is there an answer for that problem? Okay. Dogs. Okay. Um, dingoes. Dingoes tend to have packs. Now they saw, uh, Lindy claims she saw a healthy looking dingo taking the baby away or she doesn't, she doesn't even know she saw the dingo with the baby, but she saw a dingo coming out of the tent supposedly. And other people said, and then she said something about a scruffy scruffy dingo. But they tend to work in packs. So was it one dingo? Was it two dingoes? Were there four dingoes? Five dingoes? I don't know. Now, did one dingo run off of the baby? Get about here. And one of the other dingoes grabbed a hold of the, the, the matinee jacket and it pulled off. And then the ding, that dingo ran off and just dropped it over there. Did, did, did the pack get together here and the one, main one who took the baby pulled the baby out and they all jumped, jumped and had a good time having a little dinner. And they left, most of the things were left there. But one of the dingoes just picked up the, the jacket and carried it off toward the den. Did... Did they not eat the entire baby there? I mean, you know, who knows? I don't know what happened. I do not know dingo behavior 
to any extent where I can say, like, for example, we have German shepherds, not me, but my daughter next door has German shepherds. And she, had, and there's a little, what was that, cockapoo dog also. And they like, sometimes they like to take items and wander around with them. And sometimes you'll find something halfway across the yard and they go, who took that? Who took the towel across the yard? Now, that's that's domestic dog behavior of these particular dogs. I don't know what dingoes do. I don't know if they like to line their, their dens with some cloth. I used to have a pot-bellied pig. That pot-bellied pig would, if you left something on the floor, it would drag that sucker, whatever it was. It could be a towel. It could be clothing. It could be a sleeping bag. Drag it into the closet and make itself a nice bed, you know? Um, I don't, I'm, I've never been a dog owner, so I don't really know dogs that well. But there are many animals that will bring in items to a location that they're in because they are making nice, comfy areas or because they like the smell of it or because maybe it does have some some delicious taste to it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about dingoes to understand this. So I would like to know from experiments uh, how pe how a dingo would remove the baby from, from the... Uh, from the uh, jumpsuit without in, uh, ripping apart the jumpsuit in a million pieces. I would like to know if a pack would work together like this. And so one might have run off with the, 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 uh, the, the jacket. I would like to know whether they just like to run around with stuff. If they find something on the ground, do they just like to pick it up and run off with it? Because if that's true, it is very possible the jacket was here and was picked up by one, one dingo or the other and was carried off to a den. I don't know. But I can see why a, uh, a detective who does not know the behavior of dingoes might guess that. How does he know? You know, it's like, so you'd have to do a lot. You'd have to really understand dingo behavior. You'd have to work with, I don't who whomever to, to learn these things. I don't have an answer to that. Um, I do believe that the story that Lindy just stabbed, cut the child's throat in a car and then did all these things that she was supposed to do, putting the baby in a camera bag and all of that just sounds so stupid. I can't, I can't, I think they just tried to make up a story with whatever they had. Well, let's see. We don't, we don't want to believe it's a dingle. We think she had the flow heavy cut. What would she use? Oh, a pair of scissors because she apparently didn't have a knife with her. Um, and where is she going to hide the baby? Well, we can't figure that out. So stuff it in the husband's camera bag and then we'll have her run off into the night and somehow hide a baby in the middle of the desert so well we'll never find it. Maybe she just tossed it out so the dingoes could find it, you know? Or <laughs> they made up a story, and it's a problematic story. So science does not say things very well. And if you look at uh, um, not this one, or you talk about this one, if you take a look, for example, uh, we, ha we have now that uh, she's been exonerated. And so has Kathleen Fulbig, who killed four of her children. Oh, no, she didn't. That's right. They all died of natural causes um, in, in New Zealand. She's just been exonerated. Uh, the governor just said, oh, look, these scientists have said that your, your children have these genetic defects, and therefore all four of your children died of these genetic defects, although that really can't happen that way, and it's completely implausible. And there's so much other evidence leaning, leaning toward she did the kids in. Munchausen syndrome by proxy is what it looks like. But, you know, to me, there's not much, there's, even in spite of all the scientific claims made here by the defense team and somebody fell for it, like the governor, um, I don't find, I have much questions over whether she's guilty or not. I believe she's guilty, regardless of that she's considered innocent. On the other hand, over here, I find the story of the prosecution came up with it very implausible. And I find that science did not support it. With with either the fake the blood that didn't really exist in the car and the and and the that, that she cut the baby's throat was not not supported by science. The only thing that makes me wonder is the issue of where the clothing was found, and I can maybe that can be explained by dingo behavior, but I just don't understand dingo behavior. So I'm willing to say that I do not believe that she should ever have been convicted because I don't see that there's enough evidence to go there to prove that she ever did anything that the prosecution was able to convict her, I think was purely on their ridiculous theory, two experts that they brought in who were garbage 
I'm sorry, experts, but this is this annoys me that when you can bring experts in to say something, and the jury goes, "Okay, they're experts. I must believe them." And then the media, they say the media pressure, the the, the, the my opinion, the incorrect or slash lying experts, um, and her, they they just may not have liked her. The jury convicted her, and so now she has been exonerated. But I mean, years of hell, years of absolute hell. Um, can I say 100% that I know she's innocent? No, because I just don't understand the issue with the dingo behavior and the clothing. But but I would lean 95% in that direction that she's innocent because I can't come up with any other plausible reason why she would kill the child in the way that they said she killed the child. And with all the witnesses that said they saw the stupid dingo around there, more than one dingo, and then we have other cases of dingoes ripping ripping children out of their tents so the only thing that would stick at all is the is the clothing issue but I, I think that may be just fairly meaningless because i just don't know dingle behavior uh so that's when we'll leave i'm going to go to your comments now oh, all righty 272 comments i don't know <laughs> all right let's 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 uh let me roll down here um let's see so many people here today okay hold on a second um Oh, that's interesting. Michaela says, you knew a new guy with a, had a dingo as a pet. He needed a license and a two foot high fence around his home to be allowed to have it. You know, we have issues of people taking in a lot of um, animals that probably shouldn't be pets. But the bigger problem is not so much that, but at the campsites, we have we have this problem everywhere. People feed the animals. They feed the bears. They feed the dingoes because they think of the bear as a cute, fluffy thing. And they think of the dingo as a dog, which is not quite a dog. It's not a domestic dog, and and it is not something that has been raised with humans on a, a 24-hour basis. We're talking about an animal as part of a pack. You, you know, it's insane to, to encourage that ch that animal around the um, campsite. Um, let's see what else you have to say. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to just stop. I just have to say this about... Uh, well, I want to. I want to look at this. Um. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Oh, wait, I just saw this comment. I want. To, I want to point it out. Um. Oh, Lauren says, I don't know. I don't know quite what you're saying, Lauren. How I felt about the Kendrick Johnson case. The autopsy determination is really different every time. No, Kendrick. Kendrick Johnson. Are we talking about the kid who was rolled up in the uh, mat? Check out my video on that. Accidental death. One hundred percent. There's not even a question there. That's that everything is being pushed by family and community and certain people in the community who like to push things. I think we're talking about this Kendrick Johnson case. I think I'm, this kid wrote up in the mat, right? Sometimes I forget. Um, oh, did he feed the dingo? Okay. I thought he did. And I always wondered whether that's what broke up their marriage was that she was thinking to herself, um, you know, she ended up in prison for three years because so theoretically, Theoretically, the dingo came and took her baby and she lost her baby because the dingo came and took her baby. And if her husband encouraged the dingo, you know, it's hard to forgive people who you believe may have been the catalyst that ended up causing the death of your child and your imprisonment. It's, you can say you forgive. And she says over and over again, she forgives, she forgives, she forgives. She doesn't want to hold any anger, but humans are human. And so I, I, I question that one, whether she, that was it. Um, let's see. Uh, doesn't double jeopardy apply if the jury said she was innocent? The jury never said she was innocent. I'm sorry. I don't know where the innocent thing came in. Um, she, the jury trial, they found her guilty. Oh, <laughs> the forensics were bullshit in this case 12 years ago before DNA. Uh, but, you know, even with today's uh, forensics, how many times do we see forensics not be accurate? All right. Blood spatter pattern, uh, D certain DNA issues like touch DNA, um, hair, hair issues. Science is, is a moving target. That's the whole thing with the cath the full, full big case. It's like <laughs> their claim that four of these children died of two different kinds of genetic anomalies, which once you actually look up the plausibility is like ridiculously low. I mean, you can get people to say anything. And it's called science. 
so there is good science, but then there's a lot of bad science. And then there's a lot of, we don't know which one it is, <laughs> you know, we just don't know which one it is. Um, uh, <laughs> Benny says, <laughs> there are so many similarities to the McCann case, except Lindy is innocent. Um, well, the difference is the McCann's claim that a human being came in and took their child um, and she claims a dog took her child. At least in this particular case, a dog was seen. I'm sorry, a dingo was seen. A dingo was seen. And in the other case, no human being was seen. All right. There's also some evidence of it that a, a dingo, at least be, I say being right there at the tent, uh, there was evidence of a dingo taking something away and dragging it. And yet in the Madeleine McCann case, we don't have anybody proven to ever have entered the, 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 the vacation flat, nor do we have, well, we have sightings. Well, most uh, one sighting by her friend, which turned out to be bogus as I'll get out in the McCann case, and one sighting by the Smith family, which the McCanns refused to believe. <laughs> they should have had a dingo out there in uh, Portugal. They'd be, <laughs> they, might, they might be more believable. All right. Um, why, oh, that's a good question. Loretta says, why the mother and not the father? Um let me think um because i don't know uh got me on that one yeah why not i mean because he doesn't use nail scissors <laughs> because why wouldn't he use his own camera case i mean more likely that he would be willing to take the crap out of his camera case and put the baby in than his wife would yeah it's a little 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 weird there um yeah it doesn't oh yes he is uh, Michael, 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 Michael Chamberlain has died. Um, I believe he had leukemia or something. He is dead. Yes, that's true. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, and Danny says, no, he was feeding it bread and brought the dingo into the campsite. A lot of people are throwing food at the dingoes. Yeah. It's just a stupid idea. Um, you know, you can feed ducks, feed ducks. I mean, <laughs> you know, ducks and geese are not probably going to eat your child. But when you're talking about Canines um, or other animals with large teeth. Uh, he, he, I just, it's just interesting. I was just at, uh, we went to this um, place called Luray Zoo in Virginia and we got to see the alligator feeding, which was fascinating because the guy was saying, what, one of the problems they're having with alligators is not that alligators are aggressive toward humans, but the stupid humans are feeding them. Or they're doing things like walking to a tiny little cute doggy right near the, the alligator's mouth, you know, and, they're doing things that encourage the alligators to attack. We well, can't do that. So, you you know, the whole concept with any wild animal, especially bears and, and things like that, is you don't want them near your camp. You can, you know, I mean, I, I love looking at bears. I was down in um, Tennessee, uh, Smoky Mountains, and I got to see uh, three different sightings of bears, but I was far, far away. I wasn't feeding the, the, the bears. I was watching them at a distance. So, you know, if, when people are stupid, they invite trouble. There's no question about it. Um, and let's say, um, uh, yeah, Sacrifice in the Desert. Her, her name, they claim that uh, that uh, Azaria's name meant Sacrifice in the Desert was just just junk. It doesn't mean that at all. I mean, it's Child of God or some such thing. Or Pete. I forgot. It's a nice name, but it's, it, it's not like anything like that. Um Oh, okay. Uh, Lex Hay says, doesn't really matter why she was camping with a nine-week-old baby, nine week old baby. Many people have done that before. And nobody really thinks twice about it unless something happened. Not good. Then they judge. I like this, Lex. This is a very good com comment. Um, people have interesting ideas about babies, what, you're, what you can do with an infant, what you can't do with an infant. Um, there are people who, once they have, a, they have a baby, and no one is supposed to get near the baby or touch the baby. When my daughter was born, I was at a picnic the next day. <laughs> you know, was that that? Was that my son? I can't remember. One of the one of them I was at. Oh no, it's my son. I had a home birth of my son, um, and the day after I was at a picnic. Well, you know, there's women across the world who go out to a field, have a baby, keep working, and come back and hang with the people in the village. They don't go hide away, you know. So the concept that you can't move around with an infant baby 
go places. I know I did camp with my children when they were small. I don't remember how small they were, but I can, I honestly, I, I don't really have an issue with having a tent and laying down with a baby in a tent and nursing the baby and leaving the baby. They're all snuggled up. I don't see what the problem is. People around the world sleep out and out of doors. They sleep on footpaths. They, they sleep in, you know, mud houses. What's the difference if you're camping? I mean, <laughs> it's not a big deal, you know, and the baby, you know, you put the baby down and, the, you know, even these, these guys can rip into tents. I think that the problem was people didn't think they would actually do that. They didn't think that a dingo would go in and pull a child out. They didn't think about it. They didn't think that they would really go into a tent. They might be in the area, but they wouldn't going to do that, you know. Well, people have learned differently now. And so <laughs> Pat loves her bling bling. <laughs> I do love shiny things. I do. It's like, I don't ever wear them for my show, but I do love shiny things. Um, oh, I'm glad you did that. I watched the videos this weekend because I didn't know about this case. Yeah. Uh, and that's, it's a very good idea to watch all of those. Um, let's see. Um, <laughs> you're sick of the case. Yeah. I mean, this case, like, it's one of those things that, Sometimes cases define even a nation and the people in the nation are like, can we stop talking about this crap now? Um, I'm pretty sure the uh, Brits are, a lot of them are tired of hearing about Madeline McCann. Now, the Portuguese are definitely tired about hearing about Madeline McCann. They're done with that. Colorado probably doesn't want to hear another thing about JonBenet Ramsey. Um, just irritating. Um, LS says, uh, ridiculous theories they created based on her religion. The media is really problematic. Um, you know, I, the other thing I saw was they, people were sending letters straight to Lindy. There, was, there were letters of support, but there were letters of hate. And I'm like, who does this? I mean, if you just think somebody's guilty, who are you to write letters and send it to their address or to stand outside their house and scream at them? I think this is sick. I, I, I've never understood this kind of concept. The police are supposed to be solving the case. And if they're working on the case, why do you feel a need to express yourself in that way. I think and you, whoever does that has more of a problem than maybe she had. Um, the media is appalling. I mean, the half, we need to have standards in the media where we do not do this exploitative stuff, but you no know, exploitation makes huge money. But you know, there can be that reasonable middle ground where you can, you can work on a story you can be the investigative reporter, but you don't have to be exploitive in doing it. You don't have to be telling lies and making up a whole bunch of crap and willing to put anything as a headline across the page. I mean, but unfortunately, uh, the media has been that way in the past. They're certainly still that way now. And now YouTube and, and other Internet sources, sources have gone off on that whole tangent as well. So talking about something is fine, but being outrageous and throwing out headlines that are just uh, completely not based on facts, especially when you're, you're, you're a professional media person. But though, you know, one of the problems is that they'll go, they'll, they'll literally go after anything, any way they can. I used to get these phone calls cause I don't do, I don't do any television work anymore, but I get the phone calls says, Hey, we want to talk about this. Can you come and talk about this? And I'm like, that's that's not that what your story is doing is not correct. I will talk about this. And they go, oh, never mind. <laughs> They're done. They they want what they want. And they don't care about ac ac accuracy. So um <laughs> your heart sunk a little. <laughs> Sorry about that, Michaela. <laughs> you can hide from this channel, you know. Other people do. Um Um, um, Lisa N says, I totally lost interest, interest in this case after her conviction. So was, so was stuck with my original prejudices all these years. Um, you know, it's, <sighs> this is where we get emotionally involved in something we probably shouldn't get emotionally involved in. And sometimes we also get not only emotionally involved in the case where we just think wrong has been done or whether the person's they're guilty and that's the wrong or the the, it's the government that was wrong or the jury that was wrong. Uh, we get invested in one simple case. Now, the one thing I always try to tell people is, well, there's two things. One is we should be definitely invested in our own government doing wrong. 
because that's the law and we shouldn't want the law to be wrong. Um, then I just, as far as emotionally, personally getting involved, I know we see a cute little picture. We get involved in the story, but as I point out to everybody it, 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 around the world, every second of this life in the world, children are being raped, murdered and killed by family members. They're being killed in war. They're being killed in all kinds of ways. They're starving there. I mean, the world is not a nice place. I've traveled enough of the world to know things can be really, really, you know, I was so fortunate when I was raising my children to be able to have the ability to raise my children at a time where, yes, there were always, there were always issues, but I had so much control, even though we, my husband and I weren't, didn't have much money, we were still able to provide a good life for our children. I was able to homeschool my kids. We had pets. Uh, grandparents, both sets of grandparents were nearby and they were nice people. Um, we had good friends. Um, my kids ate well every day. Um, they got to do art. Uh, they got to do, they got to do all kinds of cool things. My granddaughter, the same thing, you know, she's riding horses and we went on this wonderful trip. Many children in the world don't have a smidgen of a chance for that. So while we're all overly invested in this, just remember, <laughs> We, we, we could we could we, we, we could be shedding tears for a whole lot of more children than than one but we do have to pay attention to what our own governments do this is true um uh, let's say uh, I don't know if you're what you're talking I don't know if you're talking about the baby in the tent but generally speaking again the, if you're raising a child, there comes a point where you cannot hide your child completely. Now, I'm, I believe in protecting a child. But, you know, most people have gone camping with children. Their children come home with them. I mean, it's, it's, this was an extremely rare circumstance. And here's the point. It was so rare, people thought she was a murderer. There's no way they believed that a dingo went into her tent and took her kid. Because it was not heard of. It was that rare. So why wouldn't you take a kid camping if all you're going to do is have a lovely time and you're going to, you know, your baby's come all snuggied up in the, in the tent with the other kids and everything's great because you didn't expect any dingo would take your baby. It's a freak thing. And you can't protect your children from freak things. You can only protect your children from things that are clearly something, I, you know, going to uh, get in your car, maybe putting a seatbelt on is a good thing. Teach your children not to run, run out into traffic. You know, don't leave your children with strangers you don't trust. <laughs> Those kind of things. But freak things... I mean, nobody had ever heard of it. And that's why they thought she was guilty. Um, and by the way, when we talk about, when we talk about religion, if some child is in a better place. This is why I say we don't do, we don't do religion on this channel. No, do politics on this channel. But people always want to believe that their loved one that has passed on before them is in a better place because the alternative is not very nice. And to tell you the truth, <laughs> I want to be in a better place. I'm 68. I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking like, dang, how many more years do I have? And I, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's discomforting. And I, I hope there's a better place out there, or at least something interesting, or I, I get to come back and be a dingo or something. But, you know, <laughs> I want something. And if my child dies before me, or my friends die, my parents die, I want to believe that life continues on in some way, shape, or form. So that somebody has a belief system that allows them to think of a better place. I think we can't fault them on that. We may disagree with it. You may disagree with it. But that's why for that family, their belief system allowed them to believe something. Now, whether they in their private lives totally believe things, who knows? I mean, but... They want to believe these things, and maybe they do believe these things. And people for for all of return uh, all of the human life on the planet have always had some kind of hope. You know, I say I keep out of I keep out of religion here, but I understand that. And people people could fault her for thinking that way or even saying that. But you know, maybe she needed to believe it. Maybe her husband needed to believe it. You know, because that's the only way they could live with what happened because it was so cruel. So, so cruel. Um, let's see, Lauren, uh, someone can still have a personality disorder or something. Oh, very good, Lauren. Thank you very much. I like it. 
Uh, someone can still have a personality disorder or something and be innocent. I would say their behavior is information for investigators to observe, but cannot convict on that alone. Absolutely. Great profiling, Lauren. Yes, I've said this. You know, it's like you could have a serial killer live right next to a woman who is sexually assaulted and murdered, and he didn't do it. <laughs> you can have parents whose behavior is creepy as all get out, but they didn't kill their kid. And you can even have people who might have done it, but didn't. <laughs> so yes, you can look at people and say, okay, their behaviors concern me. And because their behaviors concern me, and maybe they have a personality disorder, maybe they exhibit psychopathy, maybe they have narcissism, maybe they look like Munchausen syndrome by proxy kind of people. Uh, let, let me pay attention to that. But that doesn't convict them. You have to then look for evidence and see what the other evidence supports. So you can, you can really, you can just like the heck out of somebody, you know, and say, well, I wouldn't mind if they got convicted because <laughs> you don't like them, but that doesn't mean they did it, you know? So, and we want to also be sure that we convict the right person because if we don't, first of all, we should never convict a person wrongly. But also if we convict, if let's say it is a real true homicide, we convict the person because we don't like their face because they are a psychopath or even a serial killer. We can pick them and say, yep, we did it, but he didn't. That means the real killer is out there. So there's another psychopath out there, you know, so there are two people you wouldn't like, but why did you convict the wrong one? You know, uh, <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, that's what, that was the original claim. Uh, and it was, uh, not particularly well done. Um, I think actually, let me, let me, let me read what Lila wrote me. Um, okay. Lila, what did you write? Lila wrote me a really good thing. Um, uh, about the, that whole, the whole blood issue. And this was really, really good. Um, the, in 1937, uh, Walter Speck at the university Institute for legal medicine. And I'm thinking it's Jaina. Germany developed luminol as a test for blood. It was very sensitive and could detect blood, but what kind of blood and how well does it work? All right. So in 1951, a man by Grodsky invented a proposed formula that could be used, but it was un unstable and toxic. It was not until 1966 that a man by the name of Weber came up with a formula that while still having a short shelf life was not as toxic and the more and more luminous allowing for luminous reaction to be photographed. That's pretty cool. That made it useful to law enforcement. But then she points out here, in 1980, luminol was still rather new. What was not widely known at the time was that when sprayed on vinyl, luminol can give a false positive. This is why the police claimed that there was blood in the Chamberlain family's car. Um, so, and there was also some other issues about the, um, let's see, what was the other issue about the, uh, there was one more thing about that. Oh, this too. Um, uh, it was shown later that tests were highly unreliable and that similar tests conducted on a, quote, sound deadener sprayed on during the manufacture of the car actually yielded identical results. So the problem is, could there still have been blood? Maybe. Just because the tests says it could be blood, but it also could be sound deadener, or it also could be this, or it also could be that. Doesn't mean it's not blood. So you see, now we have this interesting area again. They're saying it's blood when it could be blood, but they're also maybe not. So a lot would depend on, I didn't have a chance to see the patterns. Is there evidence of blood spatter patterns and blah, blah, blah. And where else do we see blood? You know, and we're talking about did she clean, they clean up the car really well? Uh, was there blood, I say, on her, any clothing? Uh, we're, I don't have a chance to see all these little details. And again, here's where the jury system has a problem. I want to see all these teeny little details so I can analyze everything. The jury probably doesn't do that. They go, okay, <laughs> okay, sure. You said it was blood? We'll believe it. So, but again, this would be one aspect of the crime. Then you have to match it to all the other things and say, well, uh, was a child murdered in the car with a knife or was it a dingo? 
And what happens if both of them are plausible or even possible? Then you have to look at all the other evidence and you got to put everything together. And if you come up with enough, then you can convict. But if you don't come up with enough, then you have to say, well, I don't know if the dingo did it or not. You know, have to be have to be reasonable about that and, and not convict somebody because, you know, 50 50 chance <laughs> that is that is reasonable doubt. 50 50 would not be good. Um, and yes, I would say, sorry, got to get off of that. Yes, I would. I would. I would. I would. I would camp with a nine, nine month week old. I would. I mean, I've been a lot of places with a nine week old. Um, again, this is a very per personal thing. A lot of people are very, very super protective. They won't even let people touch their kid at a certain age. And I was always a breastfeeding mom, so I never used a bottle in my life. So, hey, the kid's got good food. And I always sleep with my kid anyway. So, <laughs> you know, the baby's going to be with me. So, now it depends on the weather. I mean, I wouldn't be out there in hor horrific weather. That would be a, that would be an issue. Yeah, that would definitely be an issue. Um, let's see. Um, and that's true, Antini. Um, she actually lost two babies because it took the second girl from her that she had in prison. Yeah, that she did. She they, she lost that child. Uh, she stayed with the child for a while and then they took the baby away and then another family pretty much raised the baby. The whole thing was so screwed up. It's just unbelievable. Daughter seems lovely though. And she seems like she's carried on anyway. Um, yes, there was a witness taking pictures of the dingoes. There's no question the dingoes were in the campground. There's just not a question of that. That's where the witnesses went. But I think the prosecution wanted to play down the witnesses, uh, because they're trying to say this is ridiculous that dingo didn't do it. So they didn't want people to focus on the dingoes. Um, so let's see what else we have here. Um, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. She was, uh, as far as, uh, 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 what, uh, uh, Lindy went, she was very warm and human and likable in the documentary. I thought anyway, totally surprised me. I also agree with you. Um, so when I watched the documentary, Lindy, she was speaking as an older person. All right. She's looking like this. She is a force to be reckoned with in a sense. She's, she's, she's not, not a, not a shy person. She's not a, you know, a fearful person to speak out. She speaks out. Uh, I liked her. I agree. I, 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 I found her fairly warm and personable as well. Now, did she get along with her ex-husband for whatever reasons? No, that's very common in, in, in a divorce situation. Um, there's a lot of, you know, anger and sadness over things and God knows we don't know what happened behind closed doors either. Um, and I can't say that, you know, he was at fault or she was at fault or both were at fault. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying she's got a perfect personality, but I did not feel when I watched everything she said, and I've read her book too, by the way, she has a book. Uh, I, I bought that one. Um, oh no. Um, that book you can only get on. Huh, hold on a second. Let me see where I got that one from. It's not available at Amazon. It's an ebook, but it's kind of interesting to read because um, it is, let me see if I can find it. Um, I don't know where I had it at. Uh, I had to buy it through Google, and it's called, I'm going to find it. Um, I usually buy things through Amazon, download, but it was not available. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, link, I'll link that in uh, below. It's called The Dingo's Got My Baby, and Words That Divided a Nation. Uh, this was published in 2015, and it's only available as a paperback on Amazon for $24.99, which I didn't want to pay, but I found it at Google for like $6.99. And I did get some information out of there, which I wanted, which was about the, the, the clothing being found and when it was found and all that. So I want, that was what I was searching for. Um, I also read um, uh, a very long book. Um, also I'll, I'll link, I'll link both books below. Um, so if you want to read through things, you can do that. Uh, so I'll link them along with, uh, I can't link. I, well, I know I can, I'll, I'll link um I'll link the trial in the outback at, for New Zealand. I found it in New Zealand, so I'll link the New Zealand link. Uh, I and, and cry, uh, the the, the Merle, Merle Street thing. You know, I just you have to find it. You know, some provider, one of the providers for that one, and and watch that if you wish. Um, 
I'm more interested in watching documentary than fiction when I'm trying to um, what, read the book. Um, you know, so I, I, yeah, I liked her. I did. And I, I, there's other people, you know, when I've read their stories, I just burst out laughing, going, boy, you lie. <laughs> you know, I, I, I find them totally disingenuous through the entire book. As a matter of fact, when I, with the Madeleine McCann case, I didn't put out my book, which is Profile of the Disappearance of Madeleine McCann, not available on Amazon because of the McCanns, but available elsewhere. Um, Smashwords, Kobo, Barnes and Noble. But I never wrote that book until I read Kate McCann's book. And when I read Kate McCann's book, I was like, oh, now I have the information I need. Because it was in her own words. And so I find that rather interesting because most of the time, people think a lot of times the editor will come in and change the words. This may happen in television, rarely happens in, in, in writing a book. Um, every book I've ever written has been exactly what I said. And that includes published books by publishers. My self-pub books, obviously, that's not an issue. I have never found them to change my words. Um, they might fix a, you know, something like a, uh, just some bad grammar crap, you know, misspellings and that. For, but I have never had them change anything I said. Um, and uh, they might put a cover on I don't like. I've, I mean, you're supposed to approve things like that. But, um, but anything written about me, my biography or whatever, has come from me. So I really like books for that reason because I'm feeling like, I, if I, if that the person is writing about their own life, you might get some real information on those books. Um, let's see. Again, I, I, I wish people would get away from this. An unfortunate decision. It's not a stupid decision. It, nobody had lost a baby to a dingo. Okay, they hadn't. So why would we blame a person for losing a baby in a situation which hadn't happened in the last hundred years? I mean... That's like saying you shouldn't have taken the baby to the store because it was a car crash. You know, that it's, it's just, that's not really a stupid decision. Now, the McCanns, they made a stupid decision. They left their three children unattended, totally unattended in a house. That's called neglect. That's a stupid decision. But taking your child someplace and having something bizarre happen is not a stupid decision. It's bad luck. It's, it's a freak accident. You just, you can't. People took their, like, remember when uh, the tsunami hit? Was it Thailand? It's a really great movie out there, by the way. I can't remember the name. It's a fictionalized movie, but man, is it good. Um, you know, people took their kids to Thailand to have a lovely vacation. And they're at the beach and they're having a nice time when the, all of a sudden the waves go out and they're like, what the hell? And then the waves come in and you get a tsunami. People, tons of people died. Tourists died. But they would never, that was not, they didn't, oh, we shouldn't have taken our kids to Thailand because there was a tsunami. Well, they didn't expect a tsunami. <laughs> you know? I mean, people go on trips and there's accidents and there's sometimes people get sick. And, you know, unless you're going to stay home and hide in your house and, and die there. I had a friend um, right after 9-11. She refused to ever, ever fly. She would not leave. She was terrified of flying. And, and when I flew soon after that, she's like, oh, my God, how can you get on a plane? She died two years later of breast cancer. She never left the house. So, you know, let's not let's not get after people for things that are just freak accidents, you know. I mean, not just stupid mistakes, but freak accidents. Um, so, but just because you can't imagine camping with a smaller child doesn't mean people, it's really dangerous. It's not, you know, people do it all the time. I say, unless you're going. Now, mind you, remember the couple that took their baby and their dog and they went out hiking in the, like blazing hot weather? without proper water and anything else. And they all found were found dead. And I remember saying, Hey, they just died of heat. They just died of heat stroke, man. And people are, Oh no, they were murdered. I'm like, no, they died of heat stroke. They're stupid. It was a miserably hot day. And they, you know, there's a lot of days in the, and in the, in, 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 that you can go out and hike. You hike when it's nice weather. You know, if you're going to take your children, you hike when it's reasonable weather. You don't take your children on 105 degree heat. You, know? <laughs> you don't. You don't do that. Your children can die of heat stroke. That's stupid. But if your child, if you went out taking a nice hike with your child at, oh, I don't know, uh, the weather's 70 degrees and you're having a lovely time, you're only going to hike five miles from your car. And there's a, and there's never been a landslide in that area, but for whatever freaky reasons or a landslide that day, and your kid gets crushed. Are you a bad parent for taking your kid hiking in a place that never had a landslide before? Or is it just freaking bad luck? Sometimes it is. That's the way it works. 
So, you know, um, that's a good, that's a good interesting point, Lex. If she walked that far in the desert at night in the middle of Australia, she'd end up hopelessly lost 99.9% .9 of the time. That's a great comment, Lex. Yeah. Um, she wasn't, this was not like she was a, you know, Aboriginal tracker. I mean, she was a pastor's wife who did not live in the area. She's not going to know which way to go to hide, hide the baby somewhere or the clothing. It's just, the whole thing is so stupid. It's just, yeah, I can't even go there. It's just too dumb. Woof. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just too dumb. Um, Um, well, I feel like it would be awkward for that jacket to fall off of the long sleeve if her arms were in the sleeves. <sighs> well, both of the, both the, 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 um, the jumpsuit had long sleeves and then the jacket had long sleeves. So theoretically her arms were in two sleeves and two sleeves and she was, and now, but, but let's, let's look at things realistically. Um, it's, it, I don't know whether those, sometimes when you buy things for children, they may be on the loose side uh, because they're going to grow into them. You know, you, you know, in other words, one of the problems you have with a baby is you, you get the most gorgeous little outfit and they outgrow it in one week. So what you do is you buy it bigger or people give you bigger things. So your kid will grow into them. And sometimes I've had my, my baby in a thing was like you know, flopping around, like things hanging off, <laughs> you know, because it was still too big, but it grew into eventually. It's hard to say how perfectly the thing snugged onto the baby. And again, I don't know. This is, I say, I would like to do, if I were investing in this case, I would like to do a lot more experiments and trying to figure out, you know, how the baby would be pulled out. Now it's very possible that if the, 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 the dog gets hold of the baby's head, puts a paw and just goes like this, the arms are just like this and just pull right out. It could be that simple, you know? And so I, I'm not willing to say that the baby can't come out of those things. But I just wondered why the jacket was so much further away than the jumpsuit. But again, maybe the thing just dropped there and another dog just took it. I mean, I'm not a dingo expert. <laughs> maybe the doggies just like to carry crap around. That's our, the German shepherds next door to me do. So, yeah, they like doing that stuff. Um, let's see. Um, oh, Lex says it would be like... Um, Th uh, thrashing and shaking it about a garment could, could, could come off and supposedly yes I heard that they do this kind of thing so that is possible that yeah uh, I'd say I would love to do tons of experiments like that just to so I could absolutely see how it would work um, <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> most animals in Australia will kill you given the right circumstances eh, you know a lot of wild animals are they can be pretty, you know, pretty vicious. I, we got to feed an emu today, though. That was quite fun. Hmm. Yeah, pecky little thing. <laughs> and have big, big feet. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Ularu. Ooh, Ularu? Wait a minute. Okay. Lex says, Ularu, not o Ularu. Oh, Ularu. Oh, U, so the U is like a uh, Ularu. Okay, not Uluru. Hmm. Uluru. All right. If I ever do this show again, I'll get that right. <laughs> I get most of my pronunciations for crap, you know what I mean? It's like bad. Um, let's see. Um, A whole lot of things, but other things. Um, they said quite solitary, but they said they said there were other. They you know it's funny. What I read was they there there were there were they had packs. Um, so I don't know. I'm a little confused about all of that. So, uh, oh yes, this is true. They had someone track the dingo that took it. The baby sweater made an impression in the dirt. Now. Yes. Uh, supposedly the baby was carried and then it was dropped and then there was an impression from the sweater uh, and there are drag marks and things like that. Now, this is like a tracker who supposedly is really good at this stuff. 
Do I believe absolutely 100% that person is correct? Well, I think it'd be more correct than me. But then again, you know, they brought in Cameron uh, for their to say that the baby was cut by a, by, by a blade. And he was an expert. <laughs> so which experts do we believe? And that is part of the problem. A lot of times, even the, the top expert, it's still an opinion. All right. It's still an opinion. And the question is, do we question that opinion by getting a second opinion, a third opinion, a fourth opinion? And this is where things get really tricky. Because just because one person says that, even if like, oh, this is this guy's an Aboriginal tracker. He's been tracking for 50 years. He knows what he's talking about. I've heard that said about doctors. I've heard that said about blood spatter pattern experts. I've heard that said about um, uh, forensic pathologists. And I've gone, you're wrong. <laughs> you know, I've been a profiler for twenty over 20 years. I'm always right. Huh? Never question me. Never. I'm an expert. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, that's an interesting point. Oh, okay. They scavenger hunt alone, then go back to the pack. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, as apparently they, I don't know that that's true. A lot of the theories is that they would crunch the baby pretty quickly, but you know, it's not a big baby. It's not that big a meal, but again, I would like to know. I'd like to, like, if I, I would like to do experiments, like putting in something the size of a baby with some, you know, I cut the meat in a certain thing and stuff it in a, <laughs> a little, little, a little outfit and, and see what happened to it. I mean, and there were people who were doing different experiments. I just don't have access to those experiments to actually see how they work. I want videos. I want videos. I did not say dingle. I said, I said dingo. <laughs> I don't believe I said dingle. Um, uh, let's see. That's it. Um, okay. Yeah. It's, so you got, you got these there, yeah, you got these, you know, you got the prosecution, you got the defense and they're disagreeing. So if these are both famous, famous, uh, forensic pathologists, why would one forensic pathologist say a, and the other forensic pathologist say B, if they're both experts, shouldn't they entirely 100% agree, but they don't because either, science is not so scientific and maybe there is a, a subjective viewpoints or maybe somebody got paid more than the other person. <laughs> and they're like, um, Oh yes, this was another thing. Dingo hairs were misidentified as cat hairs. That was another part of that, that, that I that supposedly happened that they did find some hairs, but they, they were misidentified again. We have an opinion. So I, I don't know. It's sometimes, hmm. Oh, you did it, but oh, you just finished a course on forensics. Yeah, very scary. It's, I mean, forensics is so important, but we also have to understand that we have to interpret. Everybody, you know, everything has to be interpreted. Not, it's like, it's like, okay, I'll give you a simple example. Well, I experienced this in, um, in, um, when I was doing sign language interpreting. I was interpreting for a woman who was getting um, a biopsy, a breast biopsy for cancer. Now, here's what happens. So she goes and gets a mammogram. By the way, ladies, this, this is to you. They go get a mammogram. Crunch, crunch. Okay. <laughs> then they look, then they get this, the, the, the x-ray, right? They send it off. Nowadays, they just put it, you know, they send it overseas and just have somebody in the middle of the night, like in India, read it. Now, here's what happens. Now, I'm going to, this is, this is, a, if you're a doctor out there or a radiologist, and you want to like kill me right about now? <laughs> I'm giving a simple example. Take it as a metaphor in a, in a way. All right. Anyway, apparently this is what I was told that whether you get a biopsy or not, it depends on these white dots. So when they look at the, the, the x-ray, they're looking at the dots, all right? It, the white dots. If there's a few white dots, they're not worried. If there's many white dots, they become more worried. And if the white, many white dots are more clustered, they become more worried. 
And if the white dots are clustered enough and there's enough of them, then they recommend a breast biopsy to go see whether that is cancer or it isn't cancer. And so then I went to this woman's breast biopsy and I watched this, which was, I think, one of the most medieval things I've ever seen because the woman lays flat down and her boob hangs through a hole and then somebody comes and stabs her through the hole and sucks out. It's just creepy as hell. Anyway, I was interpreting going, okay, now they're going to, you know, anyway. So, <laughs> and they did this and she was freaking out because she thought she had cancer and blah, blah, blah. It came back and she was fine. And, but the interesting thing was about the white dots. The white dots, there's no exact science in that. So you got a guy out there who's reading these things. He's like, now, if he reads all of the white dots as being far enough apart, not as not too many, and he keeps telling the, the doctors uh, slash insurance company people that don't worry about it, don't have a biopsy. They're like, hey, no, no, you should be recommending a biopsy more often. So what happens is they get into a habit of recommending more biopsies to A, protect from making a mistake and not the person having cancer and not being diagnosed with cancer, and B, because it makes a crap load of money when you do the stupid biopsies. So they lean in the direction of being, oh, we want to take care. We want to check this out. I see more white little spots that are clustered than I would like. That's a very subjective opinion. There is no objectivity there at all. So these are the kind of things that happen with forensics as well. So when you see certain things, you go, what does that mean? Now, there are some things that are more obvious than other things, okay? So there are there, there are certain times when people are examining for cancer, they're like, oh, crap, that's cancer. <laughs> like a person lights up like a Christmas tree all over their body in places they shouldn't. I'm not saying it's always subjective. Right? You're like, oh, that person's got cancer. But there are other times when it's very, very subjective. And it could be subjective for the preventing lawsuits. It could be subjective for making making more money. But somebody is going to get nailed. So this woman went through this stuff and she comes out and she's all happy later on. Oh, they thought I didn't have cancer. I'm thinking probably didn't have it to begin with. And that, that guy shouldn't even recommend you have that stupid biopsy. But you now are happy you don't have cancer. And the, and the, and the, the insurance people or medical system, whatever, made a whole lot of money. Isn't everybody happy? <clears throat> and the guy who's doing, the radiologist keeps his job because he wants to make them happy. Because if he keeps saying, don't bother, he's going to lose his job. <laughs> so it's all more complicated than we think. It sure is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's a little bit. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what other comments you have here. Would you be, oh, picnic basket. Well, that's, picnic basket's not a bad place to carry a newborn, actually. <laughs> oh, uh, and I, I want to point out, yes, there's a lot of cultural things. And we have to be very careful about cultural stuff. Because where we decide something is inappropriate, it's very appropriate for other people um, and other cultures. And so this, we have to be careful when we're doing um, any kind of uh, detective work, profiling, and so on and so forth. We want to make sure that we're not looking at another culture and saying, oh, well, that's, that, that's a, you just doing the wrong thing or you, you, you know. So those, those are issues uh, as to where that line is between this is acceptable in a culture and, uh, hey, even in that culture, it's not really acceptable. <laughs> you know, so, but we have to pay attention to that because we shouldn't just jump to a conclusion that, oh, my God, you know. Let's see. Um, Hey, I, I got, people should only write nasty letters to politicians. Yeah, stop writing them to the family directly and stop responding directly to people, um, you know, and, and that sort of thing. But it's, but now, now I have to admit, one of the things that a family can also do, and you can do this too as well on, on the internet. Um, like, like remember, remember recently when uh, 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 Carly Russell, her boyfriend's like, oh, don't be so mean to her, you're bullying her on the internet. I'm like, well, why is she on the internet? She doesn't have to look. If you don't look, you don't see. What, I don't, no, I do not Google myself very often because somebody's going to be on Reddit going, that Pat Brown's an idiot. You know, <laughs> I try to avoid that. I get enough of that in my comments uh, on YouTube, but I do avoid looking just to see. This is so much nasty stuff. I just don't go there. Um, it's just better not to. 
if it doesn't serve me any purpose, I, I, I don't see any reason to look at it. So I, I just don't. So just if somebody's going to be bullying on the internet, don't go to places people bully on the internet. If, if people are sending you piles of mean letters, you know, that's called something you can put in a fireplace and make a nice fire out of. No, you don't have to open the dang stuff. <laughs> so, well, I'm going to say Michaela, they're not alone. I've seen British media is awful. USC media is awful. I, pretty much every place I've ever worked with the media. I mean, I love certain people in the media and I love certain concepts. And I liked, you know, it, it's frustrating. I, I liked being in the media because I like the opportunity to speak to people. Um, I'm happier now because I, 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 even though I, I tried to be very straightforward and honest and not kowtow to anybody. And I had a reputation for not doing that. I still always was constrained here. I'm not constrained here. I, I get to say what I want to say. I get to say it as long as I want to, even if I put people, people to sleep, but they just <laughs> stop watching, <laughs> you know, or even they get mad at me, but nobody tells me what I have to say. And I can actually do what I'd like to do here. So I'm much happier on YouTube than I ever was on TV. Although I must say, I'm, I'm, I miss hair and makeup, you know, <laughs> you know, I have, and I've had people recently going, Pat, you ought to have bangs and Pat, you ought to do this with your hair. I'm like, well, send the people over to do it because I have zero talent. And I used to go and get my, I used to pay $200 a month to get my hair cut and get it colored all perfect because most of the month I still put it back in a ponytail. But when I got, when I got to the studio, which was, you know, when I was working in the studio every day, I got to look good every day. I go in there and they put makeup on and they blow out my hair and do all kinds of great things to it. And then I, you know, after I finished, I could go have a drink or something and I could look good in the bar. You know, <laughs> I have no talent. So if I can't go into the television networks, this is, this is the best I can do. I suck with hair. I'm like, I just don't have the energy to, if I got my hair cut and all this, what am I going to do? You know, I'm like, I'd be sitting there trying to blow something out. And I'd be, yeah. so, <laughs> It's not happening, guys. Come here for the profiling information and, and skip the beauty thing here. <laughs> it's not it's not gonna happen. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's not gonna happen. Uh let's see. <laughs> um world is a tough place. Yeah. And the best we can do is be the best we can be in it and be kind to the people around us and you know, have good be be a good be a good citizen be the best citizen you can be, you know? So uh, that's my final statement. I'll help as many people as you can help children, help your community, yada, yada, you know, give my speech. Um, <laughs> ah, Lord. Um, so, um, let me see what final comments you have here before I sign off. It's about two hours in and I, I, I'm exhausted from my three three day. We just we did so much in, in in this two and a half days. We just crazy amount of stuff. Um, it, was, it was super fun. We had a good time. Uh, nice to be nice to be with family. Having you know just having 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 fun. So we did. Let's see any other comments I want to point out here before you all disappear on me. Um, <laughs> Dingo experts on your CV. Okay, I, I should have contacted you, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh goodness um, uh, uh, oh you're surrounded by coyotes oh that's kind of cool yeah that's kind of neat uh, <laughs> um, yeah uh, the DR Kunz case yes oh wait a minute hold on a second Lauren says yeah the DR Kunz case is is very similar to this and most people that I've run into think that the fam the, the parents did something to DR Quinn's. As a matter of fact, they even think that the little boy went missing at a campsite. They believe he was actually dead before they even left the house. And they did a whole fake camping trip thing and all kinds of nonsense there, but he did get to the campsite. What happened to him at the campsite, the little boy was, did he wander off? Did he wander off a little bit by himself and the, a bear got him, which is, which is possible. Um, something happened to him. They never found his body, but, so a lot of people think his parents did something to him in the night. And I do have a video on that case. So if you want to look it up, just go put in profiler Pat Brown D or Kunz and you'll see that it's a video. Um, I didn't, they have never been um, charged with anything and rightly so, mind you. And I think this should have been the same situation here. 
Um, there was no solid evidence to say the parents did anything to their little boy. I can't say they absolutely didn't. I just don't see the evidence to prove that they did. And I think she should not have been charged. Um, there are other people. There are other people who I think are guilty who haven't been charged either. And a lot of times it's because you can think what you want to think. You can even think I'm 95% sure. But if you do not have enough evidence to go to court, you don't have it. You can't, you can't just arrest somebody because of your theory. You have to arrest somebody on evidence. You can think what you want, but until that evidence is there and you have a uh, probable cause and you can charge him and you think you can win in court, you shouldn't be there. Um, and sometimes you have to let a guilty person walk because you just don't have the evidence, which sucks. But, you know, it's the way it is. <laughs> I, I miss having hair and makeup, too, and I've never been on TV. Yeah, that was my only way to ever get good hair and makeup. I mean, I say I wasn't I was. I've never been talented in that. I just, even as a teenager, I, I, yeah, I suck at it. I do. I suck. I should just go to wigs. Wigs probably be easier. Maybe I could just put a wig on. But there's some really pretty wigs out there. I should go that direction. I'm just too lazy to go look for one right now. <laughs> Laziness controls a lot of my life. <laughs> so anyway, let me, let me stop here. <laughs> uh, and thank you all for being patient and waiting for me to show up uh, so I could do the show tonight. And um, it was it was a weird show to do because it wasn't it wasn't one of these clear things where I'm going to analyze the entire case. It was more a case of everything around the case and the the misapplication, in my opinion, of the of so many issues here of of uh, vilifying uh, uh somebody because of their religion or their behavior or just their behavior of jumping to conclusions. Of, and the worst and, 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 the, and the terrible media, but I personally think the worst thing was not that the police questioned whether she did something to the child, because I say, I still have an issue over the, of the clothing thing because I don't understand the dingo issues there. I don't mind the, the, the questioning. What I mind is that they created literally, and, that, and it's what they did in the prosecution in this case, is the same thing I have seen people do on the internet. Well, they will take, they, they believe somebody's guilty and they will create the stupidest theory ever <laughs> to try to make up a story that they, they, that doesn't have, doesn't hold any water. It's just a stupid story and it's not based on evidence. It's like, what the heck? Although they made up a story about her and apparently the civilian jury bought it. They put in two experts who, were really not credible, even though in theory, one of them could be true, right? About the blood, but they, they weren't credible. They made up a completely ridiculous theory and the, the jury went for it. So there you go, but it shouldn't be done. I, I, I That theory was so bad that there was no excuse for, for that happening. And so I think the prosecution was pretty, 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 just plain out wrong for what they did. So, so that's that's what that was what interested me most about this case in the end. Don't make up theories that don't aren't based on evidence. So, anyway, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate it. And it was a late for the uh, late for the East Coast in the U.S. And uh, <laughs> Benny Hilly was good for you in the Philippines, so that worked out well. And I like to do Australian and New Zealand cases sometimes because I have people patrons from there, and then I like I want you to be awake and be able to come to these shows. So. If you send them in I, and I do another Australian or New Zealand case, I will try to make them at the time you're awake. Okay. I will do my best. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, thank you for being here. You're all great. And again, if you're new to the channel, please do like, and subscribe. It keeps the channel going and join Patreon. If you want to be with these great people in the chat room who I love because I hate doing shows where I can't talk to anybody. <laughs> so, so see you next time guys. I I'll be back.